episode 121 of Podcast Room 303. I'm your host, Jermaine Colon Mendez. This is my co-host, Nicholas Morhan. And as always, we have with us EPE. Uh, I've already asked you how you're doing this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any additions to this? Has your status changed? This evening? Yes. We're just two-parting it now? <laughs> yeah, it's, this is a two-parter, as uh, previously yeah, I mean, discussed. I, I, I'm... I, I, I'm good. No, no, no rants between starting and starting. <laughs> Let's see if I can rant about something. All right. So we do have uh we do have a Nick talks out of his ass for the last episode. We forgot to get into the exact order for the div- division, which is our favorite. I'm assuming we're all going Packers, Vikings, Lions, Bears. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so Eric, get us the odds on that. Poor favor. Pulling it up while Eric's pulling that up. Today's episode, we're going to be getting into communion with E, and then we'll be doing Madden ratings, uh, which Nick does have a rant queued up for on that. I'm sure he's upset with kick power. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> Aaron Donald's kick power is trash, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So the uh, Packers, Vikings, Detroit. And Chicago to finish in that order, it is the favorite. It's plus four hundred. That is the favorite, huh? Yeah. Cool. You can still get a plus four hundred. That's that's a great price. I wonder uh, plus four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm gonna parlay that all of those with Bears give up the most points while scoring. The least points and Justin Fields under in everything except for rush yards and interceptions. I I think Justin Fields will lead the team in tackles because <laughs> he's got to stop all those pick sixes from happening. <laughs> his, his completion percentage is going to be through the roof. Just they may not be the Bears players. Yeah, one hundred percent. He'll ha- he'll have his fifteen touchdowns. Justin Fields is going to win goddamn MVP this year, isn't he? This is going to be our worst, like, we talk out of our ass. <laughs> Bro, all signs point to him being fucked. So if he wins MVP this year, I will happily catch that out. I want Justin Fields to be successful. The Bears do not. I I don't know what to tell you on that one. But, all right, so now that we've got the exact order out of the way, we got the Nick's to- Nick talks out of his ass taken care of, we'll go ahead and get right into communion with E. So go ahead, Eric. All right, so uh, last week was the uh, MLB All-Star uh, week celebration, and they have the best event from the uh, from the event is the uh, Home Run Derby. Uh, so I wanted to see if we can do an all-time Home Run Derby. A little bit of a bracket here. So we broke it down. We have four categories, and there's going to be four from each era. So we have the pre-Jackie era, the pre-steroids era, the steroids era, and then the modern era. So I'll give you guys um, the bracket, and then we can do uh, we can go elimination round and, and see who the uh, all-time home run derby winner would be. Let's do it. All right. So for the pre-Jackie era, we have – and let me give you the seeds. The one seed is Babe Ruth. The four seed is Ty Cobb. The two seed is Jimmy Fox. The three seed is Lou Gehrig. For the pre-steroids era, we have – the one seed Hank Aaron versus the four seed Mickey Mantle. The two seed Willie Mays versus the three seed Herman, or sorry, Herman Kilbrew. For the steroid era, we have the one seed greatest baseball player of all time, Barry Bonds Jr. versus King Griffey Jr. The two seed Sammy Sosa versus the three seed Mark McGuire. And then I the love modern that matchup. And then in the modern era, doesn't it feel like what was it, 1997? That crazy yeah. year? Yep. Yeah. The modern era, we have um Arguably one of the worst baseball players of all time. Alex Rodriguez is the one seed versus Trout, the four seed. Uh, Albert Pujols, the two seed versus the three seed, which would be Big Poppy. All right, you've, you've heard me say this multiple times, Jermaine. So I'm just going to knock Eric off his rocker right now. Because Eric <laughs> loves to hate Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez was five minutes away from becoming a Boston Red Sox. When he left the uh, the uh, Texas Rangers in free agency, he wanted to be 
or no, when he, they had a trade in place to send him from Texas for, for Nomar Garcia Parra, Johnny Damon, and Kevin Euculus, Kevin Euculus, to send him to send those three players to Texas and get Alex Rodriguez to Boston. But Alex Rodriguez was willing to accept a $5 million a year contract to play with the Boston Red Sox and the NFL or the, sorry, the MLBPA nicks the deal because it would set a bad precedent for baseball contracts. So he went to the New York Yankees and got paid out of his ass. So before you go slandering Alex Rodriguez, know that he what he wanted to be a Boston Red Sox and the greedy MLB players association said, no, I mean, so then the man did what he does best and he played baseball and he embraced the rivalry. <laughs> Fucking PA. Oh, see, now Nyack's now still trying to like muster rage now that he knows he was five <laughs> minutes away from getting Alex Rodriguez. From Alex I mean, Rodriguez, maybe arguably being the greatest Red Sox of all time. We we still ended up winning, what, like two or three World Series in the time you that he was in the Yankees <sighs> uniform? You're a Boston Red Sox, Eric. You're, I'll spo- say, no, you're I know, supposed I mean, to tell you're us saying, how many. You're supposed to tell us how I'm many championships. In the time <laughs> that he was in a Yankees uniform, I don't remember when he retired, but I'm sure he won three while he was in the Yankees uniform. Final answer. Final yeah, answer. is that that's your final answer? You still hate him? You still fuck Alex Rodriguez? Yeah, fuck Alex Rodriguez. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna move into the bracket. So on the left side, we have the pre Jackie. Um. One seed Babe Ruth, four seed Ty Cobb. Who do you guys got moving on? We'll do the one four first, obviously. Um, so go Babe ahead, Nick. It's Babe Ruth. Yeah, so Babe Ruth has 714 home runs in his career. And damn, Ty Cobb is way down this list. Wow, come on, Command F. <laughs> I should have done this first. Ty Cobb has 117 home runs. 117? That's what it says. Why is he on this list? No, there's no way. Career Ty leaders. Cobb's... Yeah, why'd you pick him for this list, Nick? He only has 117 home runs. Oh, he only does have 117 home runs. Well, Ty Cobb's getting eliminated. Yeah, that that was a bad choice. That was easy. That was easy. Ty Cobb does not make it. Ty Cobb, good baseball player. <laughs> not, not, not a home, a home run, run hitter. hitter. Uh, <laughs> wow. He's only so, 600 short. Eric! Um, <laughs> my bad, my bad. And then uh, for our next matchup in the pre-Jackie, um, we have the two seed, which would be Jimmy Fox, versus the diseased man himself, the three seed, Lou Gehrig. Jimmy Fox, I believe, is what, Jermaine? Six on the all-time home run list, maybe late, maybe later, maybe seventh or eighth. Jimmy Fox? Yeah. No, nah, he's nineteenth. Well, that's a fucking swing and a miss. Jesus Christ. Five hundred and thirty-four home runs. Okay. What? Uh, Lou? Well, Lou Gehrig. What is? What is Lou Gehrig sitting at? Lou Gehrig is 29th, four hundred and ninety-three. I mean, Jimmy Fox can slug for sure. I. I'm picking. I'm, you know I'm picking Lou Gehrig. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, I, I'm gonna pick Luke Gehrig. I, here's the thing about Luke Gehrig, like he, I believe, got Luke Gehrig's disease pretty like in the middle of his career. He could have played for, I mean, he played for 17 years, I guess. But but back then, like, you could play for 97 years because pitchers weren't because <laughs> you weren't playing a lot of games and pitchers were throwing 70 miles per hour. So. I mean, just just to use just to use that, like Hank Aaron played twenty three years at a high level. I mean, Nolan Ryan played. I think Nolan Ryan played some crazy amount of years Jim, too. I, Jim, Jimmy Fox played three more years than Lou Gehrig, and in that span, only hit forty one more home runs. You go. Nolan Ryan played twenty seven years of baseball. That's fine. so. Insane. Lou Gehrig. Um, was diagnosed in 1939. He played that season feeling he, – he had talked about he was feeling tired and blah, blah, blah. So he had already 
had the disease, but they didn't diagnose it till the end of the season. But he bat, he averaged uh, 295, 114 RBIs, 170 hits, 523 slugging percentage, 689 plate appearances with only 75 strikeouts and 29 home runs. Give me Gehrig, dude. Oh, Gehrig, he was suffering shit. from a disease that they named after him. That's muscular failure. And my man was out here in 29 jacks. Seven, dude, the 75 strikeouts and 639 appearances is wild. That is and so you know good. You know what's crazy? It was the second highest number of his career. The strikeouts? And it was so low. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. So if Lou Gehrig does not get Lou Gehrig's disease, we're talking about him as the greatest, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. 100%. And we already talk about him. Right. As one of the greatest baseball players of all time. That's incredible. So Babe Ruth, the one seed versus the three seed Lou Gehrig. And, right. and Eric, I do have to correct you. 1938 was not his final year. He did play another year in 19. He did to play eight games in the 1939 season before retiring. So he tried to go a whole another season. After he tried to play a whole another season. He only hit one. He only hit 143 and only had 29 plate appearances. So you're saying he won the World Series with the disease that was named after himself? Because they won the series in 38, didn't they? Uh, I believe. Let's see. Let's take a look at the playoff batting here. 1938. Yes, they won the World Series. <laughs> he won the World Series while dying. They beat the Cubs while dying. <laughs> the Cubs couldn't even beat a dying man. That's crazy. Hey, fuck you. All right. Uh, we're going to move into the modern. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Just, well, who's, making it, who's making it out of that bracket then? Oh, I was going to do and then go back to each one. I like, said you know how the a March winner from the brackets. Yeah. All right, fuck it. All right, so for the pre-Jackie champ, it's going to come down to Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. I'm pretty Did sure you we are. pre-Jackie champ? Oh, pre-Jackie <laughs> champ. Yeah. <laughs> I heard pre-Jackie yeah. champ. I was like, what does Jackie champ have to do with this? <laughs> That's hilarious. No, no, no. But for the pre-Jackie champ, we have the one seed Babe Ruth versus the three seed Lou Gehrig. Pretty sure we Ruth all know. China, you can probably hit a home run. I don't know. I think martial arts was his sport more than baseball. I mean, the obvious choice is Babe Ruth, right? Yeah, it's the obvious choice. I, I like I, a part of me wanted to pick Lou Gehrig just because he's he's a G, but like. Was well, this here's, disease here's, Lou Gehrig or regular Lou Gehrig? <laughs> I, think I would say regular. Here's, here's one of the greatest sports debates of all time. If you took Babe Ruth out of like 1919 and you gave him like a modern day training regimen and like made him eat healthy, like he's dominating the game of baseball, right? That's what I say about Michael Jordan. Yeah. If Michael Jordan wasn't drinking scotch as soon as he finished a basketball game <laughs> and right. smoking one cigar – every night for 365 days a year. Could you imagine what that man would be doing on people? I mean, how many, how many does, how many does Ruth have? He has 715. Yeah. 714. 714, right? This man hit 714 home runs in 22 years of baseball and would go is notorious for smoking cigars and going to the concession stand between innings. <laughs> Like my like or during the innings, my man would hit a home run, run around the bases, grab his cigar from the dugout, walk <laughs> through the concession stand, buy a couple of glizzies, walk back down and be like, oh, I'm playing first base, and probably smoke a cigar going out to first base. Fucking legend, bro. There's no chance. <laughs> There's no if chance. You, if, you, if you've ever smoked a cigar, you know <laughs> how taxing it is on your body. It feels hard to breathe for a week after smoking a cigar. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he came up to the plate sometimes and was like, <laughs> he actually hit a home run with a cigar. He, <laughs> with didn't a even, cigar. he didn't even use a baseball bat, bro. <laughs> See, if you did that, you're the most impressive athlete. Can we put Babe Ruth? Should we put Babe Ruth on the Mount Rushmore of athletes? He has to be, yes, because he's a pitcher as well. I just love the audacity of like Babe Ruth gets good enough to like just go to his manager and be like, I got a home run. Right, I'm gonna go get a couple of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, take us to the next. I just gotta read this. So Babe Ruth's uh whatever, a book that was written about him. It says Babe Ruth revolutionized baseball while indulging a passion for wine, 
women, and cigars. Yeah, I, it's not a joke that he would like routinely just be in games and just be like, I'm going to drink some beer. Like, also, also, Eric, the word you were looking for is biography. Yeah, no, it's not, it's, it's not a biography, it's just whatever. Anyway. Some dude just wrote a book about it. You, you got to understand, writers did that back then. They actually cared about baseball. So um, somebody, so somebody wrote a book about Babe Ruth's life. I don't think it was just about Babe Ruth. I think it's about baseball and how he like and and he's uh, part of baseball. So yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna move into the modern uh, era. We have the one seed, Alexander Rodriguez versus the four seed Mike Trout. And we have the two seed Albert Pujols versus the three seed Big Poppy. So we'll Nick and I both one. Nick and I both looked up like, is he gonna finish that? <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Alex Rodriguez versus Mike Trout is a fascinating matchup. <laughs> is is it not? Come on, like, yeah. that is yeah. insane to me. Alex Rodriguez fourth on the home run list at six hundred and ninety six. How do you retire with not hitting 700? Bum couldn't even get to seven. I, oh, that's what I don't even. <laughs> you talk to me, Eric. <laughs> I'm so mad he retired without getting seven, though. Oh, do we need we need 15 more yaks from Albert Pujols? Do you think we can get that? Yes, 100%. Because he hits 700. But, so, like I was saying, Alex Rodriguez has 696, and he's going against my active – Player Mike Trout, who is currently sitting 111th on the list at 334 home runs. He is played 12 years and he's 30 years old. All right. In seasons where Alex Rodriguez played over 100 games, there was only one season in which he did not hit uh, at least, sorry, two seasons that he did not hit over 30 home runs. One of those seasons was 2015 when he was 39 and he hit 33 home runs in 151 games. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez is winning this. Alex Rodriguez is winning this against Mike Trout. I love Mike Trout. No, dude, this is the upset. This is, this the, is upset the upset of the think? bracket. So let's say Mike Trout plays another 12 years, right? That puts him at 24 total years, right? Yeah. That puts him at 668. Home runs. That's just shy of Alex Rodriguez at wow. 696. Alex Rodriguez, over 22 seasons, if you took his 161 game average, he hit 295 with 40 home runs and 121 RBIs. God, that was just, he just woke up and did that. That's how he, <laughs> he just woke up. He's just that good at baseball. What is Mike Trout's? 161 game average. Stand by. I don't I don't know that Mike Trout has played. So Mike Trout has never played 161 games in a or 162 games in a season. His 162, that that notwithstanding, his 162 game average, 303, 40 home runs, 103 RBIs. So they have the exact same number of home runs if they were to play 162 games. Uh, I'm telling you, this is the upset. <laughs> Mike Trout over Alex Rodriguez is the upset you're looking for in this bracket. I'll buy it. Yes. Buy it. Um, Trout, right? Probably the MVP <laughs> almost every year. Yeah. Better baseball player than A-Rod? Yes. Or, yeah? Okay. It's a good, so we're taking good, him for the home still, run and still baseball. Still a good question. Still a good question. It's a good question. It's a good question, but yeah, I would say Mike Trout is a but Mike Trout is a better baseball player. All right, so we're gonna move into the two versus three seed Albert Pujols versus my man Poppy. Uh, I, this I, is a this is a fun one. I think Albert Pujols. I I think Albert Pujols wins this, and it's not close. Hold on, what are you give? What are you giving me? Are you? Oh, did we lose him? You giving me Albert Pujols? Albert Pools is 685 home runs, by the way. If you give me the machine Albert Pools, he wins this by a landslide. Give Five. me 30-year-old Albert Pools, a.k.a. really 46-year-old Albert Pools or whatever he was. So Albert Pools has 685 
home runs in 22 seasons, and David Ortiz had 541 in 20 seasons. Now, let's say you get old man Poppy versus old man uh, Pujols. Who's winning that matchup? Well, that's what I want. I want like the I want the Schwarzenegger Stallone uh, boxing match. That's I want. I want to see old man willpower. Yeah, I think the obvious choice here is Albert Pujols, though. It's Albert Pujols. It's got to be Albert Pujols. If if he, if he were to play a, a hundred and sixty two games, uh, he he played a hundred and sixty at least one hundred and sixty games twice, and for a very long time would did not play under for the first basically ten years of his career. Twelve years of his career did not play under one hundred and forty. In a 162 game season, he would hit 37 home runs with 116 RBIs. David Ortiz, which actually one of my favorite stories is that um, I believe it was Ken Griffey Jr. and Alex Rodriguez were on a rehab start. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking we're, about. We're on a rehab start to a double A ball club. It was a double A ball club of the Twins. I don't remember what it was named at that time. They decided to impress the fans during a rain delay. So they decided to have a home run contest. So Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr., right? And a couple of the prospects. They did not win. The home run derby was young, was was won by a young twins prospect <laughs> named David Ortiz. <laughs> so because this is already played out, I'm going to take David Ortiz to sweep the bracket. David Ortiz emerges out of this bracket because oh, he's, so he's got that dog in him. <laughs> so we're picking David Ortiz to win over Pujols. David Ortiz so the, got that dog in him. So the three, four are both advancing in this. Correct. Interesting. Okay. Now I didn't see that coming. That's a swerve. I'm for it. First of all, any one of these men could win this tournament. So it's 100%. Not, it's not, well, not Ty Cobb. <laughs> We had a blunder selecting Ty Cobb for this list, but it is, it is what it is. So you are saying Big Poppy David Ortiz beats Mike Trout, correct? Yes. All right. So we got the three seed Ortiz coming out of that. All right. Interesting. All right, Eric, move us to the next. All right. So for the next category or for the next division, it's going to be the pre-steroid division. Our one seed is Hank Aaron versus our four seed Mickey Mantle. Our two seed Willie Mays versus our three seed Herman Kilbrew. Kilbrew, this is, yeah. This is a bona fide hitters room. Yeah. So H Henry Hank Aaron, seven hundred fifty-five home runs. Who's he going against again? We have Mickey Mantle. Mickey right? Mantle. Mickey Mantle uh, is eighteenth on the list with five hundred and thirty-six home runs. Okay. And, and Mickey Mantle notoriously injured later in his career as well. Yeah, very, very much along the lines of uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, is where he went. And but Ken Ken Griffey Jr. still played twenty two years though. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So I guess Hank Aaron versus Mickey Mantle. That's a fascinating matchup. I'm going Henry Hank. Hammering yeah. Hank. Yeah, I mean you you, you got to you got to think about this, right? There are only from so he played 18 years uh mickey mantle did there are only four years in which he hit over 40 home runs in 18 years and he has 536 home runs that's pretty impressive that's impressive he's not He's not beating Hank Aaron, but that's impressive. <laughs> Very few men are beating I, Hank I say all that to say he's not beating Hank Aaron. Yeah, exactly. Not, not happening, big fella. So we got the one seed, Hank Aaron, moving on. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, move into the next one, Eric. Eric. Uh, so our two seed is going to be Willie Mays against Herman Killebrew. I keep pronouncing that wrong. but Herman, Herman Killebrew played 22 years hit uh, 573 home runs. In a 160-game season, he would hit 38 home runs on average. Looking at, like, a Willie Mays guy, Willie Mays played 23 years. He hit 660. He would only hit 36 home runs a season, though. Wow, that's actually 
a little shocking. Not that Barely. thirty, not that thirty six is a bad number. I'm over here right. being a snob. Uh, so this dude's first name is Harmon or Harmon? Correct. Harmon Killebrew. Harmon. I think I put. We put Kerman. We put Kerman. 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 <laughs> we didn't even get close on the first name. Yeah. Yeah. Harmon. Harmon kills. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> All right. So, do we have an upset here? Is Willie Mays getting getting? Stuck? I think Willie Mays. I think Willie Mays is winning this. All right. So we got Aaron versus Mays. Okay. One versus two in this division. Boo. Aaron versus Mays because I want that. <laughs> Because it's my because yeah. it's, it's, it's jointly my show and I want that bracket. First of all, that, that everyone wants that. I'm just talking shit. Uh, all right, so we have uh, what's the ne- give this take us to the next matchup there. Jesus Christ! Uh, so we're gonna have uh, the one two seed Hank Aaron versus Willie Mays to see who wins this division or comes I, out of this bracket. I mean, we can't have the all-time home run leader in the all-time home run derby getting eliminated before the final four. Like big time players, right? Yeah. If we yeah, count he, it all if we count it all of Hank Aaron's home runs, he's the home run leader. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, they do some weird st- statistical adjustment to make Barry Bonds a leader and then keep him out of the Hall of Fame. Right. Don't ask <laughs> don't ask me why though. <laughs> don't ask me why. Because baseball writers is the last great racist institution in America. That's why. No, that's not the last great. Last great one. <laughs> baseball <laughs> used to be king of racism, dude. Uh, well, NCAA has got it pretty much locked up right now. They've got, mm. They had indentured servitude, uh, and nobody wanted to talk about it. It's their amateur status, sir. <laughs> like, uh, That's a bad look. All right, so we got Hank Aaron advancing. Eric, take us to the next one, four for four. All, All right. right, so we're heading into the steroid area. The steroid era. Our one seed, Barry Bonds Jr. versus our four seed, Ken Griffey Jr. And then we have our two seed, Sammy Sosa, versus our three seed, Mark McGuire. So we'll start with the one four. Who do you guys got, Bonds or Griffey? It's Bonds. It's Bonds. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not at all. <laughs> look, look, we could sit here and pretend. We could sit here and very easily pretend and say Griffey Jr.'s got a shot, but he doesn't. You want to hear a bonkers um, stat, Jermaine? Always. Barry Bonds played 22 years of baseball. <clears throat> How many years did he hit over 50 home runs? 19. Eight. One. His 73 home run season was the only year he hit over 50 home runs. No. <laughs> Jewish God. No. So, so how many home runs? He averaged 762 divided by 22. How many home runs did he average? So he only averaged 35 home runs? 41 home runs in a, in a in 162 game season. 41 home runs. The problem is with this is that from – We'll say 2000, we'll say 1993 to 2004. Barry Bonds averaged 44 home runs a season. That's before and there was, he took steroids. And there, there was only, there were only three, there were only four seasons in that span, 93 to 2004. There are only four seasons in which he hit less than 40 home runs. That's ridiculous, bro. Oh, why is he not in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. Barry Bonds hit 762 home runs, and Ken Griffey Jr. hit 630. Again, like we had previously said, it does not matter. Barry Bonds auto advances. <laughs> like, it don't matter who he's going against. Real, real quick question for you guys here. I looked it up. Barry Bonds won the 1996 home run derby, and Griffey went back-to-back in 98-99. Against Bonds? No, no, I don't. I don't know if the if Bonds was in the competition. Bonds only won one. Griffey won two. Interesting. I don't know if that means anything. Bonds is clearly the greatest home run hitter of all time. <laughs> I was about to say. I was gonna let you finish. I was gonna Kanye it. I was gonna be like, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce but Bonds the is the, the Barry Bonds is the greatest home run hitter of all time. But Beyonce had the best video of the year, bro. Come on, we, we all know that, dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Barry Bonds. Let's go to take us to the next matchup, Barry. Let's, let's not beat a dead horse. <laughs> so, um, 
probably the most enticing, the, the most excited one to me is the two seed Sammy Sosa versus the three seed Mark McGuire. Oh, the people want it. The people want it. So Mark McGuire never actually participated uh, in a home run derby. Funny enough, well, actually, sorry, Mark McGuire when they were doing bracket like semi bracket like like bracket styles for the semifinals and not just swing offs. McGuire won the 1992 uh, home run derby over Ken Griffey. Barry Bonds also was there and only hit two home runs. He lost to Barry Bonds in the 1996 home run derby by hitting two less home runs to him. And then he also lost in 97 and 98. So that being I'm, said, I'm going Sammy Sosa. Yeah. Sammy Sosa was in the finals of three straight home run derbies from 2000 to 2002. He just could not get it done, huh? Just couldn't get it. He won, he won one year against Ken Griffey Jr. in 2000, lost to Luis Gonzalez, and then lost to Jason Giambi. Luis Gonzalez, that's a crazy. Luis Gonzalez, yep. So, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Sammy Sosa in this. And I just, because I just, I just, I have, I have memories of the 2002 a home, a, a home run derby in Miller Park. And I, and those are just Sammy Sosa just taking absolute jacks. So we're settling on Sosa. Sosa. All right, bet. So. We have Bonds and Soso. I and think in I a know where shock, we're going. <laughs> in a shock to nobody, Bonds wins. I vote Sosa. You think so? Yeah. It's not even why do you? What do you vote? It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a little bold. I, <laughs> it's very Bonds. No. <laughs> it's Sammy Sosa, bro. Oh, you think it's Sammy Sosa? 100%. Are you being serious right now? No. Okay. <laughs> he, he played for the Cubs, so I have to pick him, dude. Right. <laughs> it's, it's an obligatory, I have to pick him. I will happily be wrong, but I'm going down on the record as right. Sammy Sosa would beat Barry Bonds. Or well, you're going down because Barry Bonds would win. Uh, not, not, in my, not in my brain. Not in my brain. All right. It's, so, it's my world. You're just living in it. I, I know that, dude. I'm on podcast with you. <laughs> all right, Eric. Take us through. Take us through our our final four of of home run hitters here. All right. So the final four is a stack squad. We got in the modern Jackie uh, side of the bracket. We got the one seed Babe Ruth versus the three seed David Ortiz. And then on the other side of the bracket, what we're calling the uh, to steroid or not to steroid, we have both one seeds coming out. Hank Aaron versus Barry Bonds Jr. So we'll start with the. Ruth versus Ortiz. Who do you guys got? Can I just watch this on repeat? Like I just, I just want to watch this game on repeat. Which game? Or, or this derby? I just want to watch this derby on repeat. I don't care. I just want them to just keep hitting. Hit for my pleasure. Yeah, dance monkeys. Yeah. Uh, so just like I just like I gave you the ludicrous stat about uh, <laughs> about very long. I'm gonna give you a ludicrous stat. Um, about Babe Ruth from 1920 to 1932. So 13 years, Babe Ruth hit 603 home runs. In that span, he only hit under 40 home runs twice. My goodness. <laughs> he, hit, he hit over 50 home runs Four times. I, babe, I, I, babe Ruth, I, I get it that the pitchers threw 60 miles per hour, and I could probably hit 40 home runs in 1922. You start to hit it over the wall. That's less exit velocity. Right. I, like, I, I hate when people argue that. I'm like, yo, a faster ball is going to get hit faster. Right. Like, so – it's actually super impressive to go Yak City Jones on a 60 mile per hour ball, bro. Here's here's what's crazy about Babe Ruth. And, and, I, and this is just because I love stats in baseball. He led the league in home runs in 1918, and he led the league in home runs in 1931. Guess the difference between those two home run totals, Jermaine. 
Uh oh, the fir- that first one he had like twenty seven. Okay. And the and the nineteen thirty one one that I think that's his biggest home run home run output. Fifty four. So in nineteen eighteen, so Babe Ruth, a young twenty three year old Babe Ruth, led the majors with eleven home runs. And in 1931, his last season doing so, he led the majors at 36 with 46 home runs. That's, 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 <laughs> what a, what a difference. What, it, that difference is what, 30? Yeah, 35 home 30, runs. 34, 35, yeah. I had to remember the numbers again. Jesus, bro. 35 home runs is what Barry Bonds averages <laughs> per year. Per year. Yeah. yeah. God damn, dude. That's crazy. All right. So uh, long story short, Babe Ruth swacks his poetically <laughs> right. on, on Dark Horse Sleeper Big Poppy, bro. The only way he doesn't the only way he doesn't win is if he gets bored halfway through and starts drinking wine and hitting on women, which is a real possibility. It's very much a possibility. If he tries to, if he tries to compete with a cigar, I don't yeah. know if he's gonna have that kind of success. You can't really hit home runs with a cigar. I've tried it. <laughs> all right so the next take us to the next next matchup eric all right so coming out of the uh either pre-steroid or steroid era we have both one seeds hank aaron versus barry bonds who do you guys got this hank is aaron and barry bonds. i don't think you can just auto advance <laughs> i'm going hank aaron against popular belief i'm picking hank aaron over barry bonds all right, well, I okay. could be I could be swayed into Barry Bonds. I can't. But looking at this matchup, I'm going Hammer and Hank. Yeah, I mean it is. <laughs> this is this is the you're you're never. It's never gonna not be tough for for me to to say this. But I I, I think it's I think it's Hank Aaron too. Ooh. Oh man. Doesn't this kind of feel like in March Madness when the two best teams meet each other like in the Elite Eight or some dumb shit? Right. And we can't yeah, get like, it in the finals. We're getting it, we're getting it too far. Uh so there was a television show put on by Major League Baseball in 19, in 1960, which ran from 1960 to 19 uh it ran in 1960 with 26 episodes, in which it pitted the top sluggers of Major League Baseball against each other in nine-inning home run contests, so three outs, right? He had nine innings to hit, his, to hit as many home runs as possible, but each inning consisted of three outs. And any ball not hit for a home run, including called strikes, would be recorded as an out. If two batters tied, extra innings would be played until the record was broken. Hank Aaron participating in uh, this with Ernie Banks, Gil Hodges, Herman Killebrew, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Frank Robinson, and Duke Snyder hit 34 home runs, second most, or third most, actually, and went 6-1 and one in seven appearances. This is simulation using statistics, correct? No, this is an actual TV show that happened in 1960. They actually did this? It's, it's called Home Run Derby. It was an actual TV show that had 26 matchups. I can watch this. Probably, yeah. I don't know where, but yeah. 1960 television show. Would you like to know who won the most or who hit the most home runs in five appearances? Ernie Banks. Mickey Mantle with 44. He went four and one in his five appearances. Would you like to know who hit the second most? I'm going to double down. Ernie Banks. (laughs) Willie Mays with 35. He went three and two in five appearances. So we may have to go back to that bracket. Herman Killebrew stunk. stunk. He went two and two, 23 home runs. I, I I think that I think that six and one record for Hammer and Hank says it all. I think he's a dog. I think he gets it done. I think Hank Aaron waxes poetically on Barry Bonds. Yeah. Dang. So that leads us to the f- the final. We have two one seeds, Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. Who do you guys got? Uh, I think it's uh, to me. To me, it's yeah. To me, it's Babe Ruth. (laughs) I have Hank Aaron winning this. Well, I guess that's where we're going to disagree. 
Yeah. I think H- Hank Aaron, to me, is the greatest home run hitter of all time. All right. Why do we not have this show? 1960 home run. It was called Home Run Derby. While one player was taking his at bat, the other player would sit at the host booth and have a brief conversation, typically unrehearsed small talk, about the contestant or the player's performance that season. Uh, sometimes a batter would hit a ball into the deep outfield. Oh, wait, hold on. Some players wore golf gloves during the show, a notable addition because the padding glove was still years away from being a normal part of the gear. Why do we not have 19 players, including nine future Hall of Famers, participate in the series? Almost all of the power hitters of that era. They could do this at spring training, bro. They Hollywood. They spring training. 100%. You want to improve baseball? Well, I found it right here. You got your 1960s idea. We're good at remakes. <laughs> Come on. We're in the off season. That's what I'm saying. Spring training. You do it in spring training. You open spring training with the home run derby. You make it a big old event. Right. And you and you each year you travel to one of a host city for that home run derby. You travel or just, to a host city or just do it at the two stations. Do it in Florida and do it in Arizona. And then the winners play at the All-Star game. I mean, we could do it. You could do it any <laughs> number of ways. But if you make it a traveling event, you could put it in the host cities, right? So like the Rockies Stadium can have it. They can host the home run derby, et cetera, et cetera. You just have that travel in each stadium. The twins get a go. The Brewers get a go, and you and you bring a revenue to those stadiums. You charge for the tickets. You put it on television. You charge for the ads. There's so much money in this. The only reason it ended is because the play-by-play announcer died in 1960. He died in July of 1960. That so they seem canceled like a it. Reason to cancel it. So they canceled it because the show's director died in September of that year. Wow. So maybe there was a curse. ESPN revived the show in 2003 and 2004, holding similar contests at Cashman Field in Las Vegas, Nevada. The contests were hold, were held just before spring training and consisted of eight men elimination tournaments and were televised on ESPN, but only lasted five innings. Just take the take two players. Take You can stick on the Yankees and take Stanton and Judge and just have them hit for nine innings and have them talk about each other in the booth. And Mostly even shit. even if you want to do this, get another player of that nationality to interview him. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here because I just made a million dollar idea for MLB. Well, you didn't make it. You're just you're re you're recasing it and giving it back. That's everything. <laughs> That's so sad that nobody's thought of doing this. All right, Eric. We need you to. We need you to be the tiebreaker. Nick has yeah. Babe Ruth. I have Hank Aaron. Oh, oh man, pay him money too. I'm gonna look up something real quick. <laughs> they paid money. Would you like to know? All right, the winner. Episode one was Mickey Mantle against Willie Mays. How much did Mickey Mantle get paid as the winner in 1960? One thousand dollars. He got paid two thousand dollars. Willie Mays, the runner-up, made a thousand dollars. Ah, I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, adjust for super contracts, and we would you would just give him I don't want twenty-five million dollars for winning, bro. They, what they would get now is insane, bro. Uh, what would the trophy look like? It probably didn't. No, I'm talking about for ours. Oh yeah, I don't know. Probably I better think, than the I, World Series trophy. I think we should make it like um, like battling Rock'em Sock'em Robots, except it's one gold-plated uh, Hank Aaron and then one gold-plated Barry Bonds swinging at each other with the bats. Oh, that's good. Commission that right now. Dang. That didn't Eric, help. Eric is so terrible it, at decisions. It didn't help. He's on the spot, bro. I saw I looked up. I was just trying to find different stats. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Babe Ruth just based off the fact that, like, I mean, oh, fuck, man. Because 755 for Hank Aaron, that's crazy. Hank Aaron crazy. Should, have, should have more than that, too. Damn. All right, final pick. I got to go Hank Aaron. 
Dude hit the most home runs of all time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. It's Hank Aaron. It's Hank Aaron. Yeah, it's got to be. That's it. That's the final. That's the final answer. Hank Aaron is the first ever and possibly last ever dream <laughs> home. Dream home run derby winner from podcast room 303. All right, so that actually took a lot longer than I was anticipating it to. So let's get into the Madden ratings, Eric. Let's take it, take us through it. Uh, yeah, so Madden, Madden released its rankings. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple different uh, positions. I'm going to give you the top 10. Tell me how you feel. Tell me the emissions, who's too high. Uh, just going to start in order of what they have here. So wide receiver, I'm going to go from 10 to 1. They have Amari Cooper at 10, Terry McLaurin at 9, Keenan Allen at 8. Mike Evans at seven, Justin Jefferson at six, Stephon Diggs at five, DeAndre Hopkins at four, Tyreek Hill at three, Cooper Cup at two, and Devontae Adams at one. Love it, hate it, emotions. What do you guys think? Uh, what I mean, what does Cooper Cup have to do to become the best wide receiver? So, uh, I mean, like save a baby from a burning building wall, catching a touchdown pass, like I. Cooper Cup just had one of the greatest single seasons as a wide receiver, and then they sat here and told me Devontae Adams is better. Right. Now, I'm not necessarily arguing that Devontae Adams is a shit wide receiver, but based on what Cooper Cup did last year, Cooper Cup should be number one. My man doesn't even get the Madden cover. <laughs> like, who is the Madden cover this year? I think it's John Madden because he died. <laughs> oh, that's right. Damn, Cooper Cup didn't even get the Madden Cup. What is happening, bro? Like, why? Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup got 147 passes for 1,947 yards and 16 touchdowns. Those all led the league with 114.5 yards per game. He finished third in the uh, MVP voting. It was Offensive Player of the Year and didn't even get didn't even get in the 99 club. That's unreal. First of all, what the fuck are Amari Cooper and Terry McLaurin doing in the top ten? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree with, I would agree with Terry McLaurin, but I would not agree with, with uh, the other one. You think Amari Cooper shouldn't be in? Should not. No. You think Terry McLaurin should be in? Yes. Over, I'm gonna name you some names. Okay. Over, over Debo Samuel. Uh, yeah, Debo Samuel is like a running back. Over DK Metcalf. Yeah, he's a big baby. Oh, <laughs> over Chris Godwin. Probably. <laughs> you could probably argue that. You could probably argue. I will I will take out Amari Cooper. I'll put in Chris Godwin. And over Jamar Chase. Yes. They ask me the question five games into this year, I'll probably say no, but right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't – like I'm looking at this these back wide receivers. How is Michael Thomas eleven? That's my boy. I, first of all, no disrespect to my boy. I love Michael Thomas. He ain't played in two seasons. Yeah, I, I thought I thought you were about to defend him, and I was like, no, you don't get to defend him. He ain't played. No, I call a spade a spade. Right. My guy yeah. ain't taking a snap, and he's a ninety overall. I, okay, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, St- Stephon Diggs, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, and Keenan Allen. Why do I want to say that Keenan Allen's disrespected, but I can't put him above any of the receivers above him? Because he is, and you can't. <laughs> but I can't put him above any of the wide receivers. He is disrespected, and you can't put him above the other <laughs> wide receivers. Those are, those are not mutually exclusive statements. He is perennially disrespected, and he is not better than those other wide receivers. Like, that is – those are the cream of the crop. Those are some of the best to ever do it, though. Let's- All right, before we move on, Tyreek Hill's a 97 right now. What is his rating after Tua constantly underthrows him on deep balls at the end of the year? He finishes 92 overall. I was going to say 94, so I'm, we're, we're, on this, we're on the same page. I'm going into the third page, and, and it fucking made me so mad. Calvin Ridley is behind Jamar Chase. I gamble on that. How? The dude didn't play last. The dude had a mental issues last year, didn't play, and he's an 86 overall. Yep. Well, don't don't get Eric riled up. Devontae Smith is an 83 overall. 
It is what it is, dude. It's just Madden. <laughs> Dude, Devontae Smith was that great. The, all, all these wide receivers ahead of him are where they should be. Like, Allen Robinson is an 82 overall, and I think that might be the most disrespectful thing. Well, he played like doo water last year, bro. Robbie Anderson's 82. How? Sterling, she- Sterling Shepard's an 82. That man needs to thank the Madden committee every day that he's alive. Oh, my goodness. That is just wild. All right, Eric, what are we going into next? All right, so we're going to move into edge rushers. Uh, I'm going to start at 10, Vaughn Miller. 9, Levante David. 8, Khalil Mack. 7, Demario Davis. 6, Cameron Hayward. or Hayward. 5, Nick Bosa. 4, Fred Warner. 3, TJ Watt. 2, Miles Garrett. And, of course, Aaron Donald at number 1. This fucking list doesn't make any sense. I was just about to say that. How is a middle linebacker an edge rusher? To <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah, the I mean, we in if, tackling, pursuit, and power moves. If we take out middle linebackers, you yeah, add, left, left and right outside linebackers make sense because you were playing three four. They're technically edge rushers. Uh, what, yeah. does, what does what does ninety one overall Joey Bosa need to do to get better? What does 90 overall Chandler Jones need to do to get better? Chandler Jones is 90? <laughs> Chandler Jones is a 90 overall. So I removed the middle linebackers just because, like, middle linebackers, they cover the middle of the field. They're not edge rushers, so I don't know what Madden was doing. Vaughn Miller's a 92. So read us the list when you remove middle linebackers there. All right, if you remove middle linebackers going from 10 to 1, Chandler Jones, 90, Joey Bosa, 91, Cameron Jordan, 91, Vaughn Miller, 92, Khalil Mack, 92, Cameron Hayward, 93, Nick Bosa, 94, TJ Watt, 96, and then two members of the 99 club, I think rightfully so, Miles Garrett and Aaron Donald. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate you reading that list. <laughs> <laughs> See, now this is a much more appropriate edge rusher list. Like, notice Fred Warner's the best middle linebacker in the game. And right. not, we're not arguing that, but he's not an edge rusher. I don't know what Madden was doing there. Um, honestly, no real complaints here. Um, Cameron Jordan is phenomenal. I actually think he had kind of a down year last year, which is not – for him, he had a down year. But Chandler Jones – what does this man have to do? He had a better season than Cameron Jordan, <laughs> Von Miller, and Khalil right. Mack last year. Well, I, so I asked, what does he have to do to get ranked higher, to get more some, some more respect? That man is perennial, dis, perennially disrespected in media, in um, agent talks, with franchises. Chandler Jones it has to be a very unagreeable person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has to be terrible, right? <laughs> he has to be just awful. He has to smell bad. Like, <laughs> I don't get it, dude. Then you have, then you go into a little more behind that. You have Darius Leonard, Demarcus Lawrence, Rashawn Gary, Roquan Smith, Daniil Hunter, who I think is too low on this list. Jeffrey Simmons, I also think is too low on this list. Michael Parsons, too low on this list. And then Jay Rex Jay Crosby, Rosen. Rex Crosby is an 87. Chase Young is an 86. Josh <laughs> Allen is an 85. My goodness, bro. Melvin Ingram is an 84. Max Crosby is the 22nd best edge rusher. That man, he needs to write a sternly, <laughs> sternly uh, yeah. written letter, he needs, bro. He needs to let as as Eric says, a salacious email to the to the Ben <laughs> Ring. All right, Eric, take us to the next group. Uh, hopefully, the Madden has them broken up a little better. Than- yeah. So, this is just going to be all running backs. At 10, they have Ezekiel Elliott, 88. 9, Austin Eckler, 88. 8, Aaron Jones, 89. 7, Alvin Kamara, 90. 6, Joe Mixon, 93. 5, Dalvin Cook, 94. 4, Jonathan Taylor, 95. 3, Nick Chubb, 96. 2, Christian McCaffrey, 96, and the overall best running back in Madden, Derrick Henry, 97. Nick Chubb should be the best running back on this list. Joe Mixon is far too low. I think think Kamara is better than Mixon. Get 
Ezekiel Elliott off the top 10 list of running backs, I'm fucking tired of it. He's yeah, not good go anymore. Look, if you go look, it's like Josh Jacobs, Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt, Ezekiel Saquon. Elliott balled out last year. What are you no, talking about? No, get him off it. He's not good. <laughs> oh my Josh, no. Josh Jacobs. So wait, you're going to praise you're going to praise a guy, man, in Christian McCaffrey who's perennially injured, and give him a 96. But my guy Saquon Barkley gets an 86 when basically playing the same number of games over the last two years. Corderell Patterson. I don't know if we can look this up. Is an 85 on Madden. That man was a 69 at the beginning of last year. I'm almost certain. <laughs> I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain he was not above seventy. Oh man, that's crazy. Uh, this... James Robinson finally getting a little bit of respect. He's an eighty-four. That will decline to a seventy-seven by the end of the year because the Jaguars will not play him. No, there's a lot of people are saying that James Robinson is the starter. Oh, and he's not won. on, and he's not on the pup list right now. Whoa. Uh, Chris uh, Carson Chris Carson may never play football again, but he's uh, 84. All right, so for the Ezekiel Elliott haters out there, last year Ezekiel Elliott had 17 games played, 237 attempts, 1,002 yards, and 10 touchdowns. He averaged 4.2 a carry. Then he had 47 catches, 287 yards, and two touchdowns. That's Give me Nick Chubb stats, please. Okay. But you, you're still going to say that he's bad at football? Because that, yes. that's what you said. Yes. <laughs> 17, games he barely, 17 games as a bell cow rushing back for the Dallas Cowboys behind that offensive line. He only, he only he rushed for two was not. Yards. He only had 237 attempts. Well, he should rush for more attempts then. <laughs> well, that's not. He can't he tell them. Be better. So, Nick Chubb, 14 games, right? Okay. Two, 228 attempts. Same number. 1,259 yards. And 257 eight, uh, and, more yards. <laughs> and, and eight touchdowns. So he had less touchdowns. And He's been Nick, three less games. <laughs> and then Nick Chubb. He carried the ball more than Zeke. You just played, gave Zeke shit for not carrying it enough. Yeah, because he played 17 games. Only rushed for two yards over 1,000. Garbage. Trash. Eric, back me up on this. I, uh, oh, he's gonna be all silent about burning down about Ezekiel and he's gonna burn down. You want to burn down the stadium? And you were just hesitant I, to I, jump in. I, I drafted the cat in my dynasty league, dude. I gotta hope he's got some juice left. You're you're, you're the worst type of scum. <laughs> that got dark. Yeah, all right, so now that we got into a little, do we agree that Derrick Henry is the best running back in the NFL? No, absolutely not. We agree that Christian McCaffrey is the second best running back in the NFL. No. No. Who's the best running back in the NFL right now? That's Christian McCaffrey. No. No, it's not. A healthy Christian McCaffrey, yes. But you're not going to bait me into the hat. He's never – he hasn't been healthy. It's Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is the best running back in the NFL. He didn't play a full season. How are you defending these other people? And then Nick, Nick Chubb gets a pass? No, because he's he is the best running back in the NFL. He's never played a full season, and he's still the best running back in the NFL. No, dude, you're out of your mind. So who's the best running back then? Give me it's, another name. Derrick Henry was the ninth leading rusher last year and only played nine games. Fucking because get he out gave him the here. ball six hundred ninety two times. I can the be the same, leading rusher so in the, the NFL. So the same reason, the same reason Zeke gets shit on. Because he didn't, didn't get enough carries. They yes. didn't give him enough carries. So Derrick Henry gets shit on because he got too many carries? Derrick Henry got the ball 700 times last year and averaged 1.5 yards per carry, dude. I could, I could, if I got the ball 700 times, I could rush for 1,600 yards as well. No. I would just have to get the ball two, I would just have to get the ball two yards. No chance, bro. No and chance. Yet you, and yet you can hit above the Mendoza line. Oh no! I'm just I'm still saying no chance because you said Derrick Henry is not the best. He's not the best. <laughs> You're out of your mind, bro. All right, Eric. What's next? Jonathan Taylor is better than Nick Chubb. So the next category, they broke it down into defensive linemen and cornerbacks. We already That's did edge rushers, so I'm just gonna do the cornerbacks or the secondary players. So All it right. starts at ten. Kevin Byard, free safety, ninety-two. 
And then Denzel Ward, cornerback, 92. Darius Slade Jr., cornerback, 92. Buddha Baker, strong safety, 92. His speed better not be that high. Tredavious White, cornerback, 93. Derwin James, strong safety, 93. Uh, Tyron Matthew, strong safety, 94. Jair Alexander, cornerback, 94. And the highest ranked safe or secondary player is Jalen Ramsey with a 98. All right, I'm Googling something real quick. Well, this list is upsetting. How is Marshawn Lattimore not top 10? Okay. I was just making sure that DK Metcalf was faster than Buda Baker. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I laughed when you said it. I knew exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. The funny thing is, is like, we're like, he better not be that fast, even though he ran against one of the fastest human beings ever. How is DK Metcalf's pursuit 34? <laughs> that should be at 102. <laughs> That man does have some of the craziest chase downs ever, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm not mad at this list. I think they got the right people on this list. I, I would, you know, I would argue Marshawn Lattimore should be top ten, but when you're combining safeties and cornerbacks, I can see how he falls just outside coming in at eleven. Um, I want to give I want to give Justin Simmons more overall points, but I don't I don't disagree with the list either. I yeah. think Justin Simmons is a 91. I do, yeah, I think just, Justin Simmons is better. I think he's in the right spot on this list. He's behind the right people. I just think they needed to make people, everyone, just a little bit better. This is the – we can all agree that cornerback is the hardest position to play in football, correct? Backup quarterback, yeah. <laughs> Backup quarterback. Shout out David Blau. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, other than I would think, I mean, uh, if you want to consider like mental in it, maybe kicker, but yeah, cornerback is the most. And how the fuck is Jamal Adams 15? <laughs> he should be on an edge rusher. Why was he not on the edge rusher list? Yeah, Jamal Adams should be a linebacker and I just don't want to see him on this list anymore. Like it's this is just ridiculous. Micah Mika Hyde Fitz, G- Mika, Mika Fitzpatrick is only an 89. Oh, my God. He's not even top 20. Jimmy Ward is an 87. Whoa. Whoa. This... Marcus, Marcus Peters is an 86. These Madden graders are. Oh, T- man. Tavon Diggs is an 84. I don't agree that he should be uh, a top 10, but I don't think Tavon Diggs should be an 84. Well, he's. Terrible in coverage, though. Like, he gave up the most yards when in coverage. What's his cash rating? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So he's James Bradbury is an 82. That man should never be allowed to have more than 79. (laughs) You just hate that man for no reason. Jeremy Chin is an 82. How is Jeremy Chin an 82? Damn, he's not even on page five. Jeremy Chin's on the sixth page. Yeah, Von Bell's an 82. Damn, this Madden grading is tough. All right, Eric, take, take, us like the, take us into the next one, Eric. Uh, so this is the last category they had. It's quarterback. I'll start at 10, work my way to one. Number 10, Matthew Stafford, 85. Number 9, Russell Wilson, 87. Number 8, Lamar Jackson, 87. <laughs> Number 7, Justin Herbert, 88. Number six, Dak Prescott, 89. Number five, Joe Burrow, 90. Number four, Josh Allen, 92. Number three, Patty Mahomes, 95. Number two, Aaron Rodgers, 96. And the GOAT, 97, Tom Brady, number one. This list is god awful. I'm tired of thinking Tom Brady is the best quarterback in football. You're tired of thinking that? Like you want him to retire so you don't have to talk about that anymore? I just don't want to talk about him being the best quarterback in football because I don't have an answer for who's better than him, but I don't think he's the best quarterback in football. I, Aaron Rodgers was the MVP last year and Tom Brady's ranked higher. Yeah. So Joe Burrow. Tom, Tom Brady has, Tom Brady, listen to this, has 71 speed, 70 acceleration, 64 strength, and 70 agility. Absolutely not. 1-1, one, 1-1-1. One, 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 one. <laughs> Sorry, Peyton Manning's a one. Tom Brady, two, 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 two. His agility in the pocket is is very nimble, especially. Okay, you're telling me Tom Brady has 71 speed? 
I didn't. That's not what I said. <laughs> I just said his agility in the pocket, which is not speed related. <laughs> Uh, Joe Burrow should not be higher than Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, or Lamar Jackson. Nope. Uh, Kyler Murray, by the way, our $160 million man, uh, has 79 awareness. So that's a, that's cool. Yeah, that's so funny. Kyler Murray's the 12th best quarterback. He's behind Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Who has not played in two years yet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, Jameis Winston's top 20, baby. Let's go. <laughs> of, of note, Ryan Tannehill has 62 kick power. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't understand how Ryan Tannehill has 62 kick power. How does Ryan Tannehill have 62 kick power and Aaron Donald have 29? So just, just for funsies, who do you guys think has the highest kick power of all the skill positions? And who has the highest kick accuracy? Kenneth Gainwell. Odell. I'm going to include – hold on. I'm going to include everybody but non-kickers. <laughs> which, which fullback has the, has the best throw accuracy? Which fullback? Yeah, hold on. I don't know. Michael Burton? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of a, a ridiculous question. All right, of all the – of all the – the players in Madden, non uh, non kickers. <laughs> Justin Reed, safety for the Chiefs, has an eighty six kick power. Damn. Uh, and Zach Davidson, tight end for the Vikings, has a seventy nine kick power and a sixty five kick accuracy to lead the team. How do they get these stats? Like, how is Tom it, Brady's Maybe they were kickers in college, maybe, in high school. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Ryan Tannehill was a wide receiver. <laughs> well, that doesn't make him a good kicker. But I was just throwing out a fun fact. <laughs> oh, so Corderell Patterson was 75 to start last year. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of the Of the fullbacks – who would you guess has the uh, best throw accuracy? Uh, Michael Burr. I'm trying to find it here. Michael. John, John Kuhn. There's only throw power. Uh, Johnny Stanton, a uh, fullback for the Browns, has 63 throw power. All right. I'm, uh, <laughs> I can't listen to this useless knowledge anymore. So the, 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 I, we already covered it a little bit, but the Madden 99 Club has uh, four players this year. Uh, they We already mentioned two of them, Aaron Donald, Miles Garrett, uh, Devontae Adams, wide receiver for the Raiders, 99, and then Trent Williams, left tackle for the 49ers, is 99. Thoughts on these, gentlemen? Uh, no, the 99 club, I don't I, – maybe my only complaint is Cooper Cup. I think Cooper Cup instead of Devontae Adams, I, I think we – I mean, the, the ones that are clo- – the ones that got close, um, uh, four players got close, Cooper Cup, 98. These are all 98s. Cooper Cup, Jalen Ramsey, Travis Kelsey, and Zach Martin were all 98s and probably should, and probably will be 99s if they continue their, their current play somewhere through the year. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. So here's the the overall team ratings. Buccaneers coming at number one with 92. Bills are 89. Rams 88. Packers 88. Ravens 87. Chargers 87. Cowboys 86. Chiefs 86. 49ers 86. Eagles 85. Bengals 85. Cardinals 84. Browns 84. Broncos 84. Raiders 83. Dolphins 83. Titans 82. And Saints 82. Uh, we'll just throw out the Panthers for Nick. They are 79, just above Jets, Bears, Lions, Falcons, Jaguars, Seahawks, Giants, Texans. <laughs> yep. That's right. Uh, the Buccaneers being the best team is kind of kind of crazy. Well, I, I guess it's because Chris Godwin is on their roster, but he's you know he's hurt right now. But that's yeah. interesting. I mean, uh, we'll, we shall see. Where, where, are the, where are the Chiefs again? Chiefs are eighth behind the Cowboys. Jeez. I okay. guess that. I guess. I guess that 
Devontae trade. I mean, uh, Tyreek Hill trade really moved him down. Uh, Madden, Packers. Madden knows more than we do. Packers are somehow still number four, despite having an 86 special teams, uh, 68 special teams. Special teams doesn't matter, only when it does. Yeah. The <laughs> oh, I guess we lost Nick. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, we were going to wrap the show anyways. For those of you guys listening, uh, we very much appreciate you. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast Room 303. I've been your host, Jermaine Colon Mendez. This has been my co-host, Nicholas Morhan. And as always, we have with us EPE. We'll see you next time when you come on down and step into the room. Thank you.